It's been a lucky ground for Palace. They'd lost just once on their last seven visits. Our commentator is Phil Duffel. Swindon Town are averaging at least two goals a game at home and will be looking to maintain that free-scoring form to bounce back from last week's setback at Bradford, their first defeat in five matches. Mark Robinson returns after injury. On loan Spurs striker Neil Fenn makes his home debut, so former Palace player George Endar is on the bench. The club's current player of the year today forms part of the opposition. After more than a decade as the Swindon number one, Fraser Digby makes his first return to the county ground as a Crystal Palace player. And it's a Palace lineup which hasn't travelled too well so far this season. The Eagles' only away success to date, like Swindon, came at Crewe. No top scorer Matt Jansen and both their Chinese defenders are away on international duty, though former Rangers man Craig Moore is back after a one-match ban. We've a new yellow peril for a football to mark the official onset of winter. Palace and Swindon were two of the three clubs chosen to test this high visibility ball earlier this year. So it's interesting that both teams should meet. Early touch then for Digby, and not one of his best. Ironic jeers from the crowd as he slices it into touch. And today's referee is from Lancashire, Mr Tony Leake. That's Robinson. Walters, can he deliver the goods? It's an excellent looking cross. It's behind for the first corner of the game by Craig Moore. Walters, as so often, the threat for Swindon. Here he is once more, good tackle. Robinson with the follow-up. Fenn couldn't control. Watson seizes on the loose ball. This is a good spell of pressure by the home team. Free kick for the foul on Walters. Adam Willis is up from the back. Hall's coming to join him on the far side. Honora's there. Digby forced into action. Well, if the Honora's been in a rich goal-scoring vein, 11 already for Swindon. He was determined to get there. Now, Swindon making an interesting change, and onto the field comes the former Palace man, George Dart, who replaces Ty Gooden, who's picked up a very early injury. A real chance for Ndar to prove a point against his old club. Clumsy more than anything else by Craig Moore. Among the three Swindon defenders who've now joined forward to get involved. Robinson's nearest to the ball. Further away comes Anora! Dar, in fact, who got the last touch. And against his old club, it's the Swindon substitute, George Dar, who's celebrating. Well, he and Honora almost got in each other's way. But the vital touch was good enough to send the ball beyond Digby. And Swindon lead by a goal to nil. Tuttle is holding a position on the near post. There are more players coming behind, but they'll have to wait as Crystal Palace try for a second time. Lombardo, deep cross, great save by Talia. Thought for a minute he may have hurt himself against the post. But, uh, Swindon were caught napping by the quick corner, and the header on the far post needed the emergency work from the goalkeeper. Onura's touch on, Endar is there. It's Kumper, well, it's Willis, stopped by Digby. Palace scramble it clear. And a super chance there for Adam Willis to get his first win and goal. Denied by the agility of Digby, and how many times have we seen him make saves like that at the county ground? Well, Terry Venables has issued a few half-time talks in his time. 
He's got work to do this afternoon, along with Terry Fennick. Swindon Town then get the second half underway, seeking home win number five for the season. And they're halfway towards that goal, leading by one to nil. Petric under pressure from Fenn. Did well to get his clearance away, but returned from Hall. There he is, getting through more good work for Swindon Town. Finds Endar on to Fenn, two in the middle. The cross is towards Walters, and he was bundled over, and it's a penalty. Craig Moore's incensed by the decision and has confronted Walters, but the referee had no doubts at all. And within 40 seconds of the second half, Swindon have a spot kick. And Walters, who won it, will be the man to take it. This is going to be one from the training ground from last season. Walters against Digby. Will there be any inside info from the keeper? Won't help him. Walters scores. Swindon lead 2-0. Nice turn by Foster. Took him away from Kevin Watson. Morrison. Have got plenty of players forward. Tuttle will deliver the cross. It's a good one. And Tanya pulls up a fight save. For any one of uh, two players could have uh, made the header. In the end, Talia made a fine save away to his left. of opening his Swindon Town goal account. Moore. Palace having to throw caution to the wind now. Moore again for to Morrison. Tally with a stop. Palace maybe with a follow-up. Swindon at full stretch, keep them out. And maybe break quickly. Brilliant stuff from Endar. Petric stopped him in his tracks. It's end-to-end -end stuff and Petric Goes for glory, finds only the stand, but with a deflection, that's a corner. Well, that really was excellent work again by Frank Talia, very close to the keeper, that makes it difficult. Talia kept it out. Foster, last throw of the dice now for Crystal Palace. Morrison with a shot, straight at Talia. Looks like the two Terries are heading home empty-handed. Is George and Dar going to stop talking about scoring against his old club? I think he'll be milking that for the next uh, next few weeks, yeah, until he gets another one. The penalty was very important as well, because right at the start of the second half, it gave you the, the two-goal cushion, which just settled any perhaps remaining nerves. That's right. We said at half-time that we wanted to start the uh, second half well, which we did, and uh, immediately scored. And that, like you say, it set the game up for us. What about the defensive performance though? Because you came under a lot of pressure, particularly second half. Yeah, we knew that would happen, but uh, we de defended quite deep. But uh, they never really created anything uh, clear-cut, and we're, we're quite happy with that. Certainly it was a good win for Swindon. Uh, uh, Phil and Gareth mentioned it, but the penalty incident, I mean, do you, yeah. I mean, it, it almost clinched it, or it did clinch it really for Swindon. Do you think it was a penalty? I do, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can see from the replay here that when the cross does come in, that uh, the Palace left back is the wrong side of Walters and the only way you can try and affect Walters from heading the ball straight into the back of the net is by giving him a little bit of a shove in the back and that's what it does and it's a penalty all day long as far as I'm concerned. I think afterwards uh, Craig Moore has a bit of, bit of a, a go at uh, Walters on the floor, the number five there, but you know it's a penalty all day long for me and I think uh, Craig Moore should just concentrate on his own job at the moment rather than getting involved in that. What did you think of the overall performance by Swindon? It was a good substitution, I suppose, by Jimmy Quinn, bringing on Ndar. <laughs> well, it sounded like he had to do it because of the injury. But yeah. um, when you look at the amount of saves that Talia had to make, um, it looks like, uh, with what Gareth Hall said, they did defend a bit deep. You know, And the problem with defending deep is that you're always likely to concede one or two chances. 
I mean, Telly's made a great save there. He's managed to get a, across his six-yard box very quick. Here's another fine save, but I think the header there, if it had been low to the ground, around his feet, something like that, it would have been a goal all day long. But uh, it's a nice height for him to react to, and I think he's really just taking it off the end of his nose, really. But uh, you see all the defenders around there, and they still manage to get chances in here, Crystal Palace. And again, it's another good save. He's come out very quick to now the angle down. And uh, I think even though he's had a good day and done what he's paid to do, I think Jimmy Quinn will be looking at one or two of his defenders and saying, hold on, that's too many chances going through. Yes, I was going to say, because he's done, he'll be extremely pleased with that win, but the yeah. defensive performance, perhaps, you know, they, they, they do leak goals, don't they, Swindon? Yeah, they do, you know, and I think a lot of teams, they, they do tend to get in front in a game and sit off and try and soak pressure up, but if you do that, you tend to let one or two chances uh, into the other team, and that's when your keeper's got to earn his money. Yeah, it's exciting for us, though just don't seem to know what to do away from Selhurst Park. They were behind after 22 minutes, Walter's free kick, and George and Dar would have enjoyed that against his former side. He certainly would have, but what a ball in from Mark Walters. That's got everything, that's got pace a lot, and uh, George gets up there and, and nuts that one in, and he would have enjoyed that yesterday. A minute into the second half, they got the second. Neil Fenn with the cross, Craig Moore fouling Walters. Terry not very happy about that. I think what Terry's probably saying is the defender's in the wrong position. He should have been inside him and not outside him. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you can't do that in the penalty box, and it is a penalty. And Mark Walters does not miss. He took the words out of my mouth. He doesn't miss, Mark, because I've, you know, I've, I've played and watched Mark for many years, and uh, he, he just doesn't miss from the penalty box. He's a great penalty taker. 